presentation. I'm so happy that as CPAC uh, we have been able to help a bit in co-organizing this event, so thanks to you and Habitat and the Hague Institute for that. Um, we're a global network of civil society organizations working on conflict prevention and peace building. Um, so many of our members are in urban settings uh, uh, trying to collaborate with local governments on issues of peace building. Listening um, to the interventions this morning, what strikes me is that it roughly confirms uh, what we know from the literature on state building, namely that the first two state functions that you have to start working on coming out of a conflict is finance and security. Uh, I hear the mayor of Kabul talking about you know, that's the first thing we need to do, start to collect taxes, start to you know, make sure that we have some clean money uh, to get going. The mayor of, uh, uh, from Kosovo also talked about it. Um, and security, but what is very striking is that all of the people this morning talked about security as in, you know, my leadership was needed to build trust between different communities. <coughs> it's, so they talk about security as human security. I hear nobody saying this morning, the first thing I needed to do was to train 5,000 police people to control the situation. So I think it's very significant, very significant. And for me, very encouraging. Um, not disregarding, of course, how difficult that is in such situations. Um, talking about the challenges for civil society, um, uh, I think, uh, and also trying to help a bit, you know, the, the, what is the, 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 the hopeful outcome of this meeting this morning is to inform a research program, that, as David said, that the Hague Institute wants to do and what Habitat is working on. Um, I think we have to dig a little deeper when it comes to the role of civil society versus other non-state actors also in the local setting. Why am I saying that? Um, uh, what is not represented here on the panel this morning, and that's in and of itself is not a problem, is um, people coming from the Latin American context. And I'm saying that because a recent report underlines that uh, 14 out of the 20 most violent urban settings are actually in Latin America. Uh, and that's also where many, from many of our members, we get a lot of feedback how difficult that situation is because the criminal violence takes on such absurd proportions. Um, and there is often, uh, let's face it, situations where even the local government is not able to provide security. Uh, and then, as a next step, we often see civil society organizations starting to make deals with criminal networks in order to provide some security and please let us let our children go to school let us you know be able to do our shopping on a daily basis because people want security uh, and not to speak of forms of self-organizing neighborhood watches and the moment that turns into armed groups you know we're back to square zero so i think there is a there is a discussion out there where we need to know more um, where, where, where we should s seek the moment where we can optimize the role of civil society in helping to provide community-based security versus what the local government can or should do in terms of providing security. <coughs> um, another element I'd like to bring out is, um, uh, and it was sort of uh, mentioned in passing, is uh, how gender relations play out differently in an urban setting as opposed to a rural setting. I think that's another interesting area to further explore. Uh, uh, how relationships between the men and women change when they move to an urban setting and how that can help build community relationships uh, and improving the role of women. I'm not suggesting that everything is all of a sudden okay when people move setting but the dynamics change because the level of exposure to information the interaction with each other is different so I think there is also an interesting area of um, of, of, of concern last but not least I, I do want to come back to that of course uh, in order for civil society to play its role uh, it needs the space to operate uh, and that is an increasing problem in, in more and more parts of the world um, uh, but if I listen to the mayors here, I think they do not belong to the kind of people 
uh, that, uh, that work on oppressing civil society, I rather hear a lot of encouraging statements and information about working with civil society, but again, just reflecting on the information we get from our members, that is an issue also at the local level. Uh, how would you... Uh, I've read about it, and uh, quite some reports uh, on it, um, about increasing totalitarian or autocratic tendencies. Uh, how would you explain that? Does it have to do with the inspiration by the Chinese model, or is, is liberal democracy out of the window, like even in, in Europe, the Hungarian prime minister is saying? No, there is some of that. There is some of that in terms of an idea of, uh, uh, of, of progress. Um, I think there is also, um, uh, uh, let's say, that it, it relates to a lack of the, the freedom of the media also to protect uh, people that speak out on behalf of local communities. Um, there is um, a capture of the state by elites, you know, who are basically after their own interest. And uh, I'm, I'm very pleased because all of you also talked about, you know, the construction of a public domain and the public interest. Don't play with basic services if you relate to the state. I mean, those are the statements that we need to hear. And that's not, you know, the kind of elite that oppresses its own people and its own civil society. It has to do, acknowledging the role of civil society has to do with creating a public domain where government and people interact with each other for the benefit of the community.